Greetings viewers and welcome back, Red Rupee here, calling the shots for you tonight as always with some Dawn of War 2 Elite Mod action. We've got a one-on-one -on -one here on Ashes of Typhon, a classic matchup between Space Marine and Chaos, our blue team player here. Initial Mink already crashing through everything with that big bad Chaos Lord. His opponent on the red side, Fear, with the Force Commander for the Space Marines. Let's see how this match goes out. The matchup, as far as Chaos Lord versus Force Commander, Force Commander a little less tanky, a little more aggressive. Chaos Lord a little more tanky and a little less aggressive to start. So we'll have to see how this plays out. The Chaos Lord himself can kind of run this bottom lane here with the two victory points. It tends to be scouts and lighter units that are capping around here, and the Chaos Lord can kind of chase them around pretty easily from the start. And of course, being Ashes of Typhon, there's no green cover everywhere. It's all light color, all, all of these kind of broken down, burnt scarred rocks here throughout the map so we'll see how that plays out i never like playing on this map as tech marine because i really need my green cover to kind of take maximum advantage of all that range dps but of course as the force commander that might not be as much of a detriment double scouts on the field for fear so far everyone just capping their back points here nothing really moving forward tactical marines moving into the center of map going for the first contested point and Chaos Marines will be able to force them off probably as they do have the better ground. So long as Initial Mink actually moves them into the cover as it stands right now. Yeah, there he goes. Now he should be able to win this first little ranged exchange here. Force Commander moving in, taking the contested victory point. Chaos Lord moving around into this far, far lane. The victory point lane, like I said, tends to be what decides a lot of these matches. And I think the Chaos Lord has the advantage here as... Chaos tends to have more, I guess, better singular units, whereas Space Marine relies on a bit more synergy, especially with the Force Commander that wants to be getting onto this match here right away. Oh, the first power expenditure here, the Power Sword for the Force Commander. That's going to give him power melee, which gives a huge bonus to these heavily armored units. He'll be able to slice right through that Chaos Space Marine armor. Scouts and Tactical Marines trying to focus down this Chaos Lord, getting perilously low but does get the decap on the power node, at least slowing down the Space Marine advance just a little bit there, but probably not ultimately worth it. He probably could have pulled the Chaos Lord off of that and maybe sent them up north here to harangue these scouts a little bit more. Tactical Marines are at about half health, but it looks like it's about to be a triple cap here for the Space Marine forces. Shotguns coming down for the scouts against these Chaos Heretics. Shotguns, not really what I often prefer against the Chaos Lord. I tend to wait until a bit longer if I choose to upgrade shotguns or not, depending on what kind of composition the Chaos Lord has, because you, will, I like keeping my scouts long range so they can kind of pepper away the Chaos Lord at range, and especially now with these Noise Marines on the field, those shotguns really aren't going to be able to get anywhere close to these nasty, nasty Noise Marines, which will just rip through these lightly armored infantry squads. Looks like the brunt force of the Space Marine forces moving into the center of the map once again. Noise Marines looking for trouble, trying to find some scouts over there, but already a quick triple cap as we're seeing here for fear right now. Initial Mink going to be able to take back the southern part of the map pretty easily with both the Chaos Lord and the Chaos Space Marines. Already upgrading now the Combat Flamer on the Chaos Lord, which will make it a lot harder for those scouts to maneuver around without taking some pretty heavy range fire. That combat flamer puts out some pretty nasty range DPS. Noise Marines looking for trouble, but not quite going to find what they were uh, hoping for in the way of scouts and tactical Marines. The force commander getting in on them is going to make it a lot harder for them to do any sort of powerful gen bashing or anything along those lines, possibly losing two, maybe even three models, depending on how this little melee retreat path goes, but uh, looks like they may, wow, I thought they were going to lose a second model of that power sword and maybe even be in danger of wiping the squad, but uh, they got out of there relatively unscathed, only losing a single model, and buying some time really forced all of the chaos, or sorry, all of the space marine forces to kind of ball up there to deal with that potential threat. So far, let's see, there are generators popping all over the map. You can see gen farm on both natural points there for both the Space Marine and Chaos Forces. Scouts, are they really going to get out of there with all three models? I can't believe that. But uh, Chaos Lord still keeping everything very dense right there. Manages to pick off a scout on retreat and then has the fallback himself. Assault Space Marines coming onto the field. Both heroes really tying up both of the opposing forces' armies right now. Force Commander, pretty low on health, but will be able to just kind of walk away from these Noise Marines if he so chooses. That said, with that Power Sword, he may even be able to just get in there and 
pick off another model or two before he has the fallback. Playing a dangerous game there as he takes a volley right quick from the Chaos Space Marines there. Two gens down. Let's see, one note up for both sides, I think. We've got grenade launchers facing off against shotgun scouts over here. Uh, now they're in melee, which is going to be the most boring melee fight I've ever seen. Both of these guys just kicking and punching each other mercilessly. Oh man, but assault space marines come in and easily scare off those heretics with those big nasty chain swords and a whole bunch of health on that meaty meaty squad. Those scouts, oh my gosh, those noise marines do such terrible damage to lightly armored infantry, buying some time with the cacophony. But uh, I, either way, they're going to have to retreat. Yeah, no, not really anything getting taken care of right there. Chaos Lord, again, you see, the Chaos Lord is just going to rule this side. He's such a big, nasty unit on his own with the Dark Halo and the Combat Flamer. He can deal with scouts. He can get in on tactical marines. Any one squad is not going to be able to deal with that Chaos Lord as it stands right now. These scout squads are kind of looking for maybe an easy cap on that side of the map, but it's not really going to happen. Havoc's, however, opening up on these assault squad right here. I don't think they had the energy for another assault jump. They just moved in, and the grenade volley had stopped them in their tracks, so now uh, thwarted potential gen bash right there. A couple scouts going down to the Chaos Lord while Fear was distracted on the far side of the map, but he's heading into Tier 2 Initial Mink going to be a little bit behind, maybe about 30 or 40 seconds behind on that tier 2 upgrade. Going for the deep cap right here, of course the Chaos Lord does have his Dark Halo so he can just kind of tank away, turn around and continue ignoring the Force Commander and maybe even take out a couple of these scouts, but he has to be very careful because that sword does do a lot of damage on retreat. Look at the chunks of health it's taken off up there. Chaos Lord's beefy, but you don't want to be on the wrong side of a power sword when you're trying to retreat. That said, the distraction seems to have worked out well. The Havocs, I don't think, are quite set up where they want to be, but they are buying a little bit of time for these Noise Marines to maybe take out a generator or two. They're just going to... Force Commander kind of has to stay on this Havoc to keep it from getting set up. Bought enough time to get the Assault Leap in from those Assault Space Marines. Two generators pop right back down, and I think, oh wow, these Noise Marines in a lot of trouble to go down. The Force Commander still in the retreat path. Assault Marines jumping in to maybe try to finish off that model as well. Havocs do go down, or sorry, the Noise Marines go down. Havocs lose a model, and that was a really well-played engagement there by Fear. Taking out those Noise Marines going to allow him to really be more aggressive on the map and not have to babysit his gen farm nearly as much as he was, and with him already in Tier 2 Initial Mink just now hitting the button, uh, there is going to be a Razorback, and that's going to be a, a really excellent timing considering Initial Mink's upgrade. There's not going to be anything that can do with that Razorback on the field for probably about a minute or so, depending on what Initial Mink chooses to purchase as soon as he gets into Tier 2. He does have a giant pile of requisition. He's got a good power income as well because he's got a full gen farm plus an additional gen on the forward farm over here. So he will be able to get a Dreadnought perhaps if he chooses as soon as he gets into Tier 2. I'm not sure what he should go for at this point in the game, but once he sees that Razorback, I feel like the Dreadnought isn't a terrible idea at all, especially to sort of back up these Havocs against things like these Assault Squads now upgraded with their Sergeant, so they do have the Power Sword, and man, yeah, you can see a couple swings of that Power Sword takes down that squad to about half health. However, he almost lost his Tactical Marines in melee over here against this Chaos Space Marines. Down on the far side of the map, we can see Chaos Lord constantly picking off those scouts. He is level 2, as is the Force Commander. Both heroes been getting in some pretty reasonable kills throughout the match here, but the Razorback will be a great addition here to really kind of squash that Chaos Lord from running that side of the map as he has been so far. And as we're, as we're seeing right now, the Razorback just rules the field for the time being. Not amazing damage coming out from that thing, but just that constant DPS from the dual-linked heavy bolter on top is really a threat to anything that isn't heavily armored. Looks like the Assault Squad made short work of this gen farm over here, or rather the power node, the generator's still standing. Looks like he's even going to try to capture it and maybe just steal a little bit of power for himself. Plague Marines coming out along with a Blood Crusher. Blood Crusher, I feel like, not necessarily what he wanted, but uh, I, I feel like I would have preferred to see a Dreadnought, but uh, in this case he is be able, going to be able to get the Plague Marines out as well as the Blood Crusher. So that'll give him kind of, he's got two soft anti-vehicle options and then of course those Plague Marines which will just straight up 
demolish that Razorback with a few short missile blasts. So he's got to be very careful when approaching going forward. A merciless strike taking out all kinds of heretics, knocking them all over the place. Uh, Kill the Week goes off, buying the heretics a, a brief respite and allowing them to retreat. While we have some corn space. Wow, those corn marines instantly taking those assault squad down to about half health. Fortunate that they managed to escape. Will they? Yeah, it looks like the corn marines do fall back and allow those, uh, those inferno pistols to not take a model there. And just a huge, a full bar from the space marines already. We've already, the space marines are kind of hitting this tier two point where they're suddenly much more formidable than they previously were in tier one because we have a Librarian on the field. We're having Sergeants hit the field. The Corn Marines tried to do what they could, but Plague Marines now moving in, taking that Razorback down under half health with just a single rocket. He needs to turn that Razorback around and not expose that rear armor to the rockets here. But uh, it looks like the Librarians actually managed to tie them up well enough that they won't be able to get that final anti-vehicle shot off. Razorback's gonna get patched up by those scouts and the Space Marines now in, uh, in full force out here, we've got Stern Guard veterans, we've got the Force Commander and Librarian all out here. Really can be a threat to just about anything on the field. Those Stern Guards can even switch to some anti-vehicle rounds and really kind of threaten this Blood Crusher along with those two power melee heroes. So I think I would have, like, like I said, I, I think a, a Dreadnought would have been a better choice here, but we'll have to see how he utilizes both the Blood Crusher and the Plague Marines. The good thing about the Blood Crusher is that he can really just jam this thing down the Space Marine's throat as it stands right now. However, he doesn't, I don't think he knows that there's a Laz Cannon on the field. Obviously, Fear has spotted the Blood Crusher or he, or he wouldn't have purchased that Laz Cannon. And even as 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 a veteran player of Dawn of War 2, like you have an idea of where your opponent is, and he saw all those generators, so he was probably expecting a dreadnought himself, even if he hadn't seen this blood pressure. So anti-vehicle, probably not a bad way to go. The corn havocs over here, unloading with that auto cannon. But uh, unfortunately for that blood pressure, I think it's still in range of the Laz Cannon. One more shot will finish that off, and with the assault marines. And Force Commander way in enemy territory over here. It doesn't look like this is a battle that you know, Chaos can win for the time being. 164 to 372. And uh, it's looking pretty rough for Initial Mink after that engagement. Uh, he's got two squads of Plague Marines, which really aren't going to be terribly effectual against all of this heavy Space Marine infantry between the Assault Space Marines and the Stern Guard veterans. We had some blood pressure summoned from a blood sacrifice right here, but they really didn't manage to do much. They were kind of at the end of the engagement, and really I feel like you kind of want to pop that blood sacrifice at the start of the engagement and maybe kind of get your opponent to commit to a battle that they weren't expecting to have to deal with a melee threat in. Afterwards, we kind of just saw singular blood crushers, or sorry, blood letters, not really going to have that much of an effect. Corn Marines getting in on these Stern Guards. Oh, a huge head special attack right there, knocking down both squads right there, forcing pretty much a full retreat right now. As they get in on the Laz Cannon, all oh, both of those Stern Guards and Assault Marines had to fall back inside of that Razor back there, both pretty beat up right there. Corn Marines not quite managing to finish off that squad. Chaos Lord looking pretty pretty rough right here. He's going to be able to keep some fire moving in on the far side of the map. We have scouts and oh, we do have a corn shrine there. This corn shrine will actually maybe buy a good deal of time uh, as the match goes on. Maybe prevent scouts from getting any sort of decap on that side of the map. We saw the librarian support there on the force commander giving him that veil of time, allowing him to really get in his opponent's face rather quickly. And oh wow, two corn shrines really going ham on the corn shrines here. Works out pretty well, I suppose, with those line of sight blockers. Chaos Heretics with grenade launchers. Haven't really seen the Heretics do too much this game, which is surprising uh, with the Chaos Lord. You normally see that corn worship used pretty effectually, allowing the Chaos Lord to get in deep and quick and healing up things like Blood Crushers and that sort of thing. I'm surprised we didn't see them over there with the Blood Crusher. It may have managed to get that thing out of there under the fire of that Laz Cannon, but unfortunately that thing's long gone. 
Assault Marines trying to deny this decap, but it looks like it's going to hang strong. We've got another Blood Sacrifice coming down here, but there are Stern Guards, the Librarian, and the Assault Space Marines, so I really don't think they're going to do too much. Maybe trying to put some pressure on these Stern Guards, which are constantly reinforcing from that Razorback. On a huge map like this, the Razorback's just so useful for the Space Marines. It really gives them the ability to sustain their field presence when otherwise they would have had to fall all the way back to their base and being such a slow kind of clunky army with all that power armor uh, it's not super oh my gosh wow look at those two stern guards get obliterated in that first volley from that corn autocannon my god really brutal and a second squad of havocs out here as well so initial mink trying to i guess go the budget route here in tier two getting a couple Havoc squads out here. He has lost quite a few models and uh, even a couple squads in addition to that blood crusher that went down. Still doing what he can to try to pressure that Razorback. Two squads of scouts now trying to harangue these heretics, but uh, they got the decap. They're buying some time. It's a 2 0 cap now in blue team's favor. Initial Mink trying to close the gap a little bit. He got perilously low on VPs, I think, and is just now kind of starting to realize. Uh, that he really needs to stay on the map wherever he can. Two squads of, or not squads, but two two pairs of bloodletters getting summoned by these Chaos Shrines. But uh, it looks like the scouts and force commander are just going to ignore them and try to take out the Shrines, which is of course the correct decision, but there are Corn Space Marines coming in here, ready to hack away. They do such crazy damage. Look at them just obliterating that force commander. I'm not sure if... He was distracted. It looks like he was trying to keep that razor back from going down and uh, lost his force commander for his treble. So good job from initial mink kind of splitting his opponent's focus there. Whenever you can kind of put two threats up on opposite side of the maps, you might get a bit of lost micro. And we saw it right there with the force commander going down. So initial mink doing what he can to stay in the game so far and uh, doing a pretty good job of it as it stands at the moment. Uh, these corn shrines kind of make it so you don't have to babysit this lower point. And it looks like it looks like the Space Marines have had enough of that. It looks like they're sending a strong force down here at the bottom. When it gets down to this later stage of the game, you can kind of ignore the top contested VP and really just push one lane. If you've got the stronger, if you've got the superior force, you can just kind of push it down aggressively just get right into the thick of it here. Another blood sacrifice. So many blood letters coming out of blood letters. It's always great when you can blood sacrifice one of those units that doesn't actually cost you anything to get an extra squad onto the field. That said, it looks like it's still not quite going to be enough. He's bought some time though and let the galaxy burn coming down right here. Giant fireballs raining across the map, but still not quite enough to deter these Space Marines. I keep thinking they're going to push in here, but it makes it very difficult when there's constantly demons spawning everywhere. You're wasting time, effort, HP, resources, all trying to stop those demons when time after time they're just going to come back. Oh my gosh, that was not where he wanted to retreat. Did he just lose that squad of Assault Space Marines? I believe he did. They didn't get inside the Razorback. He loses the Librarian as well. Why is he fighting this battle? I don't understand. That's two huge losses. Suddenly, Initial Mink, I think, has a reasonable chance at getting back into this game. I would have said it was he was pretty much down and out, but suddenly all it takes is a couple quick squad wipes. It's easy to underestimate how much damage these corn Space Marines do, but once they get into melee, it is a brutal, brutal force. Auto Cannon might be able to get a volley off on top of these, on top of this Razorback, but the Space Marines are tier three, and yes, that's the Assault Terminators. One of the biggest, baddest weapons in their arsenal now on the field. Not really much can contend with these bad boys. And uh, I think, I think if nothing else, these Assault Terminators are going to go ahead and bash down these Corn Shrines here. Chaos Lord looked like he was going to try to stand tall against this advancing, imposing force here. But uh, I think he thought better of it. Hitting that retreat button, good. going to go ahead and save himself from that. Assault Terminators, uh, man, they're just so difficult to deal with if you're starting to fall behind an army. Uh, so let's see, what's the composition here? We've got two, yeah, with two setup teams, that's really not what you want at all. These these Terminators are just going to walk right up on you and force you off the map. Both of those Corn Shrines do go down, however, both players under 200 victory points now. 
Horn Marines hoping for maybe another couple quick kills, but uh, it's not going to happen with Terminators on the field. They go ahead and hit the deep strike teleport here. After routing the Corn Space Marines, they knew there wasn't really anything they needed to worry about. Got right in the face of that Havoc squad, took out a model or two, did the same for those heretics, and now the Razorback is just sitting in a forward position on this map. Meanwhile, Plague Marines have done a good job. Uh, Initial Mink not really try giving fear any room to breathe right now. Of course, power is not really an issue when they it's this late in the game and your opponent has held a full farm, plus I think, I think a secondary generator was up here as well for fear so you can see despite losing that gen farm he still has so much power he's got 400 power so he could buy himself a couple predators he could upgrade another squad of assault space marines it's really not too much an issue i don't know what happened right here but the chaos lord just stood under a rain of fire perhaps a little too defiantly against these space marines terminators are pretty beat up after looks like dealing with these uh corn marines a bit too aggressively Force Commander now leading the charge, taking a face full of fire right now. Oh my gosh, so much damage. The Coin Space Marines are probably going to be able to take him out. The Battle Cry is buying him a lot of time, but a quick volley of grenades from those heretics. Never wish you'd expect to take out the Force Commander. Now these Terminators in a bit of trouble. Oh, Bloodlust activated along with a Blood Sacrifice. The damage is escalating very quickly here with all this power melee. Corn Marines do have to retreat, but the Blood Letters might be able to finish off these Assault Terminators. I don't think they have a teleport left. They just used it, and they go down. That's huge, especially with the arrival of the big, the gross, the disgusting, great, unclean one. Oh, my God, look at him. He's so gross and jiggly, and his intestines are hanging out. Oh, it's disgusting, and I love it. Nicely done is all Fear has to say about that one. He's probably beside himself right now because I know he feels like he had this match in the bag and suddenly he lost a Librarian, an Assault Squad, and now Assault Terminators on top of that. Razorback in a lot of trouble as the Great Unclean One and the Plague Marines are moving in. Looks like the Space Marine Force has pretty much hopped on in and decided to fall back for the time being. Flesh Hook going down from the Great Unclean One forces a quick and easy retreat from that Devastator squad. It looks like the Space Marines are going to try to focus their efforts elsewhere, which I think is a reasonable option considering that there's really nothing they can do about that great and green one. That said, again, we're seeing the Corn Shrine up. We're seeing both of these squads of Havocs and really locking down whichever victory point they choose to kind of fight at. Coin Marines trying to do what they can to get in here, uh, but putting a lot of pressure on that Razorback. I don't think the Plague Marines are anywhere to be seen, fortunately enough. Scouts did use their shotgun blast and are going to have to get out of there, but uh, the Stern Guards and the Razorback should be enough to rout these Corn Space Marines. Both sides looking okay on requisition. There is a tank coming out here onto the field shortly, so that will be a good tool to deal with this great and clean one. That said, it's really easy to kind of keep this guy out of harm's way on this bottom side of the map because you can kind of dance around this big crater here and keep those line of sight blockers in place to kind of really harangue and threaten your enemy without getting out into open terrain too bit too poorly 2-0 cap now against fear who we thought had this game in the bag maybe you didn't i thought he had it in the bag but uh suddenly these chaos forces really proving their tenacity right here initial mink showing that uh all it takes is one or two quick botched engagements and uh suddenly a thrown match could be in the works here Great Unclean one pushing in, possibly against a little too much Space Marine right here. And uh, it's a triple cap though, with only 125 points remaining. Those points can tick away very rapidly once the triple cap is down. Razorback looks like it may finally go down, but uh, the Great Unclean one is taking a lot of fire right now. Oh, big gross vomit going down, leaving that Havoc squad down to a single model. Looks like we've got another blood sacrifice though, leaving injured Plague Marines next to the downed carcass of a Razorback. Stern Guard veterans doing everything in their power to try to stop this victory point lead. Tank is still pouring fire in. Blood letters are going to take out the Stern Guards and suddenly fear is down to just a couple scout squads and what is soon to be a pair of Predator tanks. And I don't think that's going to be enough to get him back into the game, especially with everything being locked down at this stage in the game. If you don't have the superior force, 
at least in squad count even, not even the superior force, but just squad count. When both sides are down to under 100 VPs, really you just need to be able to run around on the map and hold victory points. And tanks are great, but there's just not enough time to get them onto the field and have any sort of impact. And I think, yeah, we're dropping the GG from fear as these last few victory points tick away. The 2-0 cap not really working out. The scouts aren't even capping. Oh no, he may have selected, may have just misclicked here and not actually hit the decap button. But uh, wow, a surprising turnaround from Initial Mink. It was looking very dire in his uh, <laughs> in this game around tier two when the Librarian Assault Marines and Razorback were running the field easily. But man. These Cord Marines, along with some blood sacrifices, uh, and unfortunately a bit too brazen of a squad of Assault Terminators, led to Fear's ultimate demise in this game. 78-0 to zero here at the end. These Corn Shrines can be so obnoxious when you're trying to play the map control game. They held this bottom victory point for so long, and the Chaos Lord, like I was saying, the Chaos Lord can just kind of run the map here on the bottom bottom side and despite losing so many victory points in the middle uh really managed to bring it back here it's a shame the game couldn't have gone a little longer i would have loved to have seen double predators on the field but unfortunately initial mink or i guess fortunately for him unfortunately for fear it was a bit too little too late anyways that was the game. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know I did. Feel free to send me your replays, all that kind of stuff. I know I've been sporadically in and out with my casting, but I'm one day going to be able to get back on the casting train. This is Red Rupee. I'll catch you guys next time.